Hey everybody, this is Liberty Whispers with another video for you and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about my top 10 albums of 2011 so far. Big emphasis on the so far because we still have another 3 months to go and really anything that's in this list could change. Uh, I mean two of the albums that I'm going to mention have literally just kind of slotted themselves in to my top 10 for the year in just this last week alone so with another three months and a whole sort of plethora of, of great albums on the way uh, who knows what that list will look like when it comes to making it again uh, come the end of the year but as for now these are my top 10 albums uh, in no particular order except from the last one um, the, the last album I will talk about is my favourite of the year but the other nine are uh, have not been put or defined into any particular order as of yet. So the first album I want to talk to you about is uh, Underneath the Pine by Toro E. Moa. Uh, it is his sophomore album, follows his debut Causes of This and switches up dramatically from those chill wave sounds. He was very much a part of the chill wave movement in 2009 but underneath the pine kind of just breaks off into different areas a lot of sort of 70s sounds sort of 70s funk pop sounds roller disco aesthetic to it i've mentioned him before in one of my monday mixes but just generally just much fuller more robust uh, thicker sounds just compositions that just um, are like juicier and just more to it this time around and it shows that he's got a really sort of uh, interesting palette towards his, his work in terms of sounds and just styles and ideas so yeah I'm, I'm really liking Toro Imoires Underneath the Pine the second album on my list is Black Up by Shabazz Palaces Shabazz Palaces kind of came to me out of nowhere I had not heard any of their previous material and they kind of just landed in my lap uh, when doing my usual run of checking on different websites and such started to see that a couple of people were talking about them so I decided to go check them out and it was definitely worthwhile because these guys are just so incredibly inventive and creative they are a hip hop group that implement a lot of sort of digitized distortion a lot of uh, augmented jazz samples in there a lot of woodwind instruments, piano riffs soulful vocals mixed with sort of uh, big crunchy slow burning beats uh, a lot of strange almost sci-fi esque effects in there a lot of post production on the vocals a lot of affected vocals but not in a sort of traditional hip hop sense of chopping and screwing or slowing or speeding up samples it's a lot of work, vocal work done in terms of uh, reverb and, and flanging and uh, phasing of the vocals uh, just just great great stuff very very ballsy particularly for it being their debut album but it really has kind of carved out their own lane not just in in the genre of hip-hop but just in the, in the music community as a whole just a fantastic energetic inventive listen uh, my next album is Scandalous by Black Joe Lewis and the Honey Bears who may just have the best band name in the entire history of music this album is just straight up enjoyable energetic fun it's a bit of a revivalist record because it kind of hacks back to a lot of sort of uh, 70s garage rock and funk and blues infused uh, rock and roll music very reminiscent of acts like uh, James Brown or James uh, White and the Blacks that kind of sound um, just real funky grooves real tight knit bass lines sort of fantastic energetic guitars and just real upbeat catchy enjoyable like funk rock just, just a great great album next album on my list is Trouble Books and Mark McGuire by Trouble Books and Mark McGuire. Uh, Trouble Books are a husband and wife indie duo um, who have been making music for the last couple of years together and Mark McGuire is a guitarist for the band Emeralds and this is their first collaborative project together and I hope is the first of many because I absolutely adored this record 
I it came to me again out of the blue and I listened to it last week and has just been on real heavy rotation. It is a very dreamy, very hazy kind of ambient pop record with some great guitar work in there sort of beef up some of the sort of more dreamy laid back aesthetics to the record but it is just full of sweet sugary melodies but not too much and just filtered through incredibly well composed and well put together uh, this thing is just so clean and just feel that just floats through you um, I would definitely recommend uh, a lot of people listen to this or check it out at least and see what you think I think a lot of people in the, in the Whisper community might like this record because it has a lot of sort of dreamy uh, ambient soundscapes to it a lot of sort of slow and relaxed sounds and like I said it just kind of flows through you it's just, just a wonderful wonderful record the next album in my top 10 is a record called Apocalypse by Chelsea Wolfe and this album is it's her second album uh, it follows her debut which came out late last year in December I think I can't remember the name of the first album for the life of me but I, again another artist that just kind of came out of the blue and that I just uh, kind of saw people talking about and thought I'd check out and again another worthwhile um, uh, trip into her music because it's just it's just so powerful and impacting it is a very dark record it's the complete opposite to trouble books and Mike McGuire it's just just smothered in darkness from its very core uh, it's an album that opens up with a sort of primal animalistic growling and transcends into uh, a couple of tracks uh, by the name of Murr and tracks Tall Bodies which is like these very kind of grounded, uh, impacting, slow burning rhythms that really just concentrate on really solid, almost uh, dirge like marches of drums and bass. And it just weighs and anchors the track down so well. And as a lyricist, uh, Chelsea Wolfe here paints a lot of pictures of sort of Armageddon or as the title suggests Apocalypse like the end of times uh, there's some slight uh, religious tints in there but I don't think there's too many but um, she just has a very good way of painting a very vivid picture with her words and this is really extended through her vocals which can be really quite haunting and chilling and especially when she kind of groups them together in like a choral vocal effect which happens a couple of times on the album, but yeah. Very solemn, very somber, very dark, but ultimately very strong and very powerful music. Speaking of strong and powerful, the next album that is in my top 10 is a mixtape by the name of X Military, and that comes from the group Death Grips, which is another alternative hip hop group. Uh, kind of led by uh, indie underground legend uh, Zach Hill. This thing is just this. <laughs> it's either gonna really. This is musical marmite. Uh, it's fine. It's this thing. You are either gonna love it like I did, or you are gonna question why people like me love it because it really is a dividing record. It is done with such a sort of hardcore, it's got a very fragrant vibe of hardcore punk about it in the sense that there is a real genuine heartfelt DIY aesthetic to it uh, it's not polished in the slightest, this is the roughest record you probably will hear all year round but that's why it works so well, it's just just that real homegrown charm to it and the style fits so well just these, it, it's like a audible version of adrenaline. Just these really crass, loud, obnoxious beats that just kind of bash against your head and your eardrums. Uh, and just full of real distorted sounds, real rapid fire sort of drum patterns. Uh, just, just crazy, crazy, tr crazy sounds on this album. Um, I mean, if you want a good example of it, you just need to check out the the track guillotine and the video that goes for it um, 
In fact, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna link every artist that I mention, just like my Monday mix. I'll throw in a link to an example of them. So Guillotine will be my example for Death Grips. But it's just this this loud sort of dirty bomb explosion of sounds, and on top of that, you've got this uh, MC called MC Ride who just does not rap. He just barks out these lines, and they they again in themselves are pretty dark. Um, and just very volatile and ferocious and uh, my god it makes an impact uh, so yeah that's uh, that's death grips with uh, ex military the next album in my top 10 for the year is something completely different again uh, something that is at the complete opposite spectrum of death grips and that is parlor the sophomore album from UK indie dance group Friendly Fires. Uh, I've been a fan of Friendly Fires for a couple of years now. Uh, in fact, I, I would put Paris from their first self-titled debut as, as one of my favourite songs, um, possibly ever. It's just a pure, unadulterated, catchy indie pop, and it's just composed so well. And that's uh, the same with this album. You know, it makes no bones about what it is. You know, it's dance slash indie slash just combines together so well and it's each track is just so so well done and there's room for experimentation on here it's not like it's a case of uh, you know exactly what you're going to get through each song there's a bit more beat focus on this album uh, a lot of exotic colorful sounds um yeah friendly fire is just much like um you know uh, trouble books have a real sort of enjoyable aesthetic to them, you know, very pleasing on the ear and just just it makes you want to dance, <laughs> you know, and it's it's just put together so well. Uh, we're nearly finished now, not many left. Um, next album is Josh T. Pearson's Last of the Country Gentlemen, which could be the darkest, most emotionally harrowing uh, album I've ever listened to in my life. I remember literally being kind of knocked back by this thing when I heard it. It's about seven songs long, and each one lasts between like seven and twelve minutes. And it just basically is this guy and his guitar and his sort of very uh, gravelly kind of voice singing about the evils that men do. And it's just honestly some of the best lyricism I think I may have ever heard. It's so cutting, it's so to the point, it can be so ashamedly truthful. At points, just this thing is just it's just a beast. This is a monster, um, and uh, Josh T. Pearson just really lets it go. He just unleashes so much with this album. Uh, it is not for the faint of heart because it it, <laughs> it really is like emotionally scooping. But if you're wanting something that's going to resonate with you tenfold, this thing will do it two times over and come back to give you more. I, I love it, but obviously it's not something I can listen to uh, over and over again. But still, it deserves its place. Uh, it's an amazing record. Uh, Josh T. Pearson's last of the country gentleman. Penultimate album. James Blake's self-titled album. Uh, this I heard recently described as futuristic blues and I couldn't put it any any better. He really is a guy that's kind of capitalised on this whole post dubstep movement in the last couple of years, and has really began to find his feet in different areas. A lot of different kinds of music incorporated a lot of soul, a lot of R&B, a lot of down tempo, minimal electro. Just a very chilly album, just very frosty and sparse, but yet there's, it's got a real sense of beauty and its melancholy. And it's uh, something I keep coming back to throughout the year. And finally, my last album on the list, and this really is the one to beat, and I don't have much time to talk about it, unfortunately, but it is Bon Iver's self-titled album as well, Bon Iver. Uh, he made a masterpiece, as far as I'm concerned, with For Emma Forever Ago, and that was with just him, his vocals, a guitar, and a log cabin. This gives him a full studio, a couple of years to make it, and this thing is just a classic, a modern classic, just a masterpiece. This thing just soars, so emotional, so raw, so beautiful. I cannot describe how much I love this album. It's just amazing. So there you go. 
my albums, top albums of 2011 so far.